What's going on everybody? I am the Bad Duck and you are the internet and welcome back to another review. Today we have Thor Love and Thunder. Uh came out just this last Friday. Um I saw it on Thursday because of the early viewing opportunities that they offer. Um uh, Yeah, um this is strangely one of actually the Thor film that I was actually most excited for. Um everyone loves Ragnarok and everything, and most people hate the first two. I'm kinda indifferent to the first two and I really am kind of like on the fence of Ragnarok. Um, but yeah, uh, this is the first Thor film since 2017, so it's been about five years, and it's the first time we see Thor outside Avengers film after 2019's Avengers Endgame. A few things I loved about this film was the comedy. Um, I got a few chuckles for me here. Um, a lot of people had an issue with it. I don't really see why. Um, a lot of people said it kind of like, kind of hurt the film in general just because it like, undermine some emotional moments. The MCU tendly, typically has a tendency to do that. Um, so I understand where they're coming from, but I actually didn't really feel like that actually happened here. I think the comedy was well placed and uh, well thought out really. I thought that the comedy came from everyone pretty decently, pretty well. Um, yeah, I don't really have a problem with the comedy here. I actually didn't feel like it overstepped in any way, in any form. And the, the comedy didn't feel as crude as Ragnarok or as other MCU movies, so I feel like it's actually more well thought out comedy and just better executed comedy. So that, that's a that's a big positive for me from this film. And yeah, I don't, I don't see where critics or other people are seeing where the comedy comes in worse um, or whatever. Um, Nana Portman and Christian Bale like, absolutely steal this show uh, as Gore and as the Mighty Thor. Both give stellar, stellar uh, performances. Uh, Natalie Portman was the reason I went to this movie so early. I would wait to see this movie, but I decided to go right away because I love Natalie Portman as an actress, and I love everything she does. Um, but yeah, really here she kind of like knocks out of the park, especially with uh, the background of her character, uh, especially with the cancer background and everything like that. You feel like a really big emotional um, carry by her. She carries a lot of the emotion throughout the film, and I think that's uh, you really need that, especially with her. Uh, character, so I think bringing Portman back was the best option. Was the best option and the best opportunity to bring in Mighty Thor um, to the MCU, at least for one film. And I love it. It was great. Um, she did not miss. She, she was great. Um, Krishna Bale gives a menacing uh, performance as Gore. I was absolutely terrified every time he stepped onto the screen. Um, just for every single thing he did in this film was magnificent and terrifying. You get a lot of Voldemort from him, um, and I know they wanted to move away from that. Um, that's why they changed his design up a little bit, but it's not a bad thing. I think he does Voldemort better than Voldemort, actually. Uh, just like a lot more uh, cathartic of a character and a lot more um, down to earth, but also has that, that, uh, that maniacal side to him. And it's it's done it's done very very well, and you kind of understand where Gore is coming from. You kind of sympathize with him actually. Uh, it's not like where you're you're like where you don't where it's like a full on like villain where you don't understand where he's coming from. Um, and I think Bale gives a performance so well that um, it can be put up there with like God forbid I say this uh, Heath Ledger's Joker and just all those great villains. I think he does. I think he might be the best MCU villain just because of his motivation. His drive. It's about power. We stay hungry. We devour. Um, how terrifying he is, and just how maniacal and devious uh, Bale plays Gore. Um, and I think a lot of it does take place from Go, uh, um, from Bale, not Gore. Um, and not to say that like it, like the film was written badly at all. It was written greatly. I just think that uh, Bale puts a new element to it. Um, again, like Heath Ledger did back in the day. When it comes to those, uh, it's... Can they add a new dimension that no other actor could? I think Bale hits that right on the head with gore. I don't think anyone really could have done gore like he did. Um, much like how I don't think anyone could have done Joker like Heath Ledger. So, a big plus there. Uh, Bale does great in this film. Um, Chris Hemsworth. Um, I'm not the biggest Hemsworth guy. Um, I think he does what he's supposed to do, but doesn't do much else. I feel like he's, a um, he, Hemsworth is kind of a one-note type guy to me. He just doesn't 
do enough, and he usually is the weakest player in all movies. Um, and that theme continues on here. He he is the worst out of the main cast. Um, he just does the basic what he needs to do and kind of just leaves it. Um, I wish he did a little bit more, but not a hero there. Can't really pick and choose, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think he, he doesn't do a bad job. I just don't think he does the greatest job in the world. Um, Tessa Thompson absolutely is a master class. Just great in this film. Um, a lot of emotional depth from her, um, which was surprising to me that they gave her a lot of emotional depth since Ragnarok. Um, and honestly, I won a Valkyrie miniseries after this, uh, after seeing this movie, um, in my opinion. So, uh, just anything, either with her ruling New Asgard or her, like, before, like a prequel series, just something. I, I would love to see more Tessa Thompson Valkyrie. And that's the first time I said that since, uh, Ragnarok. I don't, I, I did I wasn't the biggest fan of her Ragnarok, it was not that she was bad or anything, it was just that she kind of was just there, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I, I think that Tess Thompson really deserves her own TV show on Disney Plus at this point. Um, Taika as Korg, I think he does a lesser job than he did in um, Ragnarok, but I think he does a great job here as well. So, um, I don't think he does... He does enough. I just don't think he, he is given enough to do in the film, which is fine. I think it, it, it works and it's fine. There's no like complaints here for me, it's just that it was alright. Um, better than Hemsworth at least. <laughs> um, the things that I did not like about this film is that um, Tyka's filmmaking, um, while great here, um, is hindered by the MCU. And what I mean by that is that there was a lot of there's a lot of loose ends after Endgame um, that kind of left everything up in the air with Thor particularly, um, and I don't think Taika wanted to run with what he, uh, was left for Thor, and he was kind of stuck with it. And I feel like he was just like in this corner that he just wanted to get rid of everything, every, all the loose ends as quickly as possible, which I respect and I I, I understand. Yeah, I, I think it hurts the film overall um, because. Taika really needs to come out of the gate swinging with his filmmaking, and I, he's just not able to do that here because he's got to get rid of the Guardians. He's got to, uh, unless he wants to bring the Guardians into the actual plot, which I doubt he does. Um, so, um, with that being said, he's got to get rid of a lot of shit that he doesn't want to deal with, and um, and that takes some time in the runtime. I think. Overall, that 10-15 that minutes that at the beginning of the film that was used to get rid of all these loose plot lines could have been added somewhere else in the film to give another dimension to it to get, like, to compensate for the issue. And again, the, the two-hour runtime is is perfectly fine. I had no problems with it originally. I thought it was just, like, it's a little short on, and I, I just didn't know if they were going to fully develop some ideas, which they didn't, but that's okay. They don't need to be developed, and I think that's what's wonderful about this movie is that it doesn't feel like he needs to shove so much th shit into this movie and it does becomes a movie uh, rather than thinking it needs to run with an idea and it needs to continue pushing ideas into a run time um, and extending it where it doesn't need to be like any game did. And I, I and, and Thor Love of Thunder really hits it with the run time and the pacing it's just that coming out the gate it had to go slow and it had to get rid of some, it had to fix some ideas that typically I don't think really need to be fixed in any other type of franchise, but with Endgame and MCU overall, it needs to be addressed and fixed. And again, it, 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 it hurts this film from being great. I don't think this movie is bad at all. I think a lot of people are really, really just feeling like Phase 4 is not good in general, and I think most of the Phase 4 movies are probably the best out of the franchise yet. Um, I said most of them. Um, and their respective franchise, at least. Um, and I think a lot of people just are hating on a thing because it's good when it's actually starting to get good. Uh, and it, it, with a lot of new ideas and change being brought to them, I feel like there are a lot, a lot of people are just hating on the film because it's new and it's different. And I understand, but also I feel like it's stupid to think that way because it's more Marvel, it's more Thor, it's more what we love and care for as a community. And I think. A lot of people just don't like how it's changed, and again, I think a lot of people are just hating on it because they can, 
and it's the cool thing to do now is to hate on MCU when I think this movie is perfectly fine it's perfectly well done and I think Taika, Portman, Bale really hit it out of the park all the same uh, whether it's directing or acting or design wise um, but yeah I, I think, think overall the, the film is good it's not bad it's probably the best Thor film I would say in my opinion yeah again like I said it's not a bad film um, you're not gonna find uh, a dark world or an Eternals in this film. You're gonna find more of a uh, multiverse of madness um, for some people, or maybe like a, or I don't know, uh, just like a middle of the road, but like above it, in like the top echelon of the MCU, like the top half of it. Um, and the thing I loved about this film is that it really used uh, color and lighting perfectly. In this film, uh, there's a really good part, and we saw this in the trailer, of Gore and, and Thor in black and white. And that whole sequence is masterfully done. It is one of my favorite sequences of this year. And it really, really, I love that sequence so much. It was just perfectly done with the lighting and the color effects that are used. And how color is used in the film overall it is magnificently done. It's not like a, 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 like a fucking unicorn fretted all over the film like Ragnarok, but more of a... Uh, just like a it's just well done how well they use the lighting and color route yeah uh, there's not much i hate about this film it's i mean i don't think i hate any of the part of this film um there's just a lot of uh, weird things that happen like uh heimdall finally ha has a kid uh that, that no one knew about i didn't know about it. and i had to look it up and it's like no one knew about this it's kind of just like a thing that threw in i don't know if there was an explanation that was cut for time reasons or whatever um but it was just kind of an odd detail but overall, yeah, this film is good. It's great. Um, I, I just don't see where people are coming from. Like, this is, like, one of the worst MCU films when they did well. It was a good movie. I, I, I enjoyed myself. I didn't think it was, like, fantastic. I uh, there's, Some of the VFX are a little wonky. Um, there's a screenshot online with Natalie Portman who is in bright lights and everything like that, which would be normally fine if it wasn't a dark area that, they were, that the scene was in. And it's not doesn't look like it's illuminated by fire. It's just a weird VFX shot, um, which really I think they just need to pay their VFX people and give them the proper amount of time to complete those shots. I feel like, but other than that, like other than that whole like small sequence when Natalie Portman's character finally shows up um, as Thor, I don't think. I think it's the only film, the only part of the film that looks a little wonky to me. Everything else looked pretty good and great. I just don't think that, I think a lot of people are taking this at face value and just thinking it's terrible because it's the fun thing to do, which I really hate. I, it's really, I think people really need to think critically about stuff rather than hating on things because they're new. And, when, and I, I think I'm going to make a video about how to tame your expectations going into certain things and how to do it. Because people are fucking hyping this shit, hyping shit up way too much, and they're always let down by it, and I and it continues to hurt films over and over again. But that's neither here nor there. Um, good film, go watch it. It's really, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this is, it's a really good film. Um, I did not regret my two hours. I had a fun time. I, um, again, like I said, it's my favorite Thor film. It's it's not bad at all. So. Um, Go watch it for yourself. Make your own opinion, as I always say. Um, other than that, have a good night. I'm the Bed Doug.